Well, recently, Steel Will's been dropping some new pocket knives. So I got my hands on the large and small Lanner series. We're gonna break down what they have going for them and see what makes them different from a lot of other Steel Will pocket knives. Swing. What's up, folks? Here we are, tabletop, have some fun with the Steel Will lanterns looking forward to just breaking them down for you showing what they have to offer and again i got cut jack i've got the intrigue i've got a rap model one i've got a civivi and i've got a spider crow or bird raven two just for some reference that we're going to hit today as we break these knives down now as i've said a little bit earlier that steel wheel is really dialing in this kind of like i would call these particular models just above budget um so still very affordable but you know it's they're not like 40 dollars they're around like the 60 dollars price point um that we're getting with these designs with very similar materials to a lot of their line d2 steel and either g10 or polymer in this case we're looking at g10 with both of these models uh knives and bronze bushings ambidextrous pocket clips the pocket clips are the same on several of their models so they're kind of just giving us options with a, a consistency of steel a consistency of handle material and i like that so there's not a lot of wondering they're really dialing in this kind of line this series if you will of knives with basically different blade shapes but very similar steel and um handle materials just to kind of give you options to play with size whatever connects with you, uh, which is a smart move, I think, for a company that's just gotten their kind of feet in the water in the last couple of years into the knife community and they've been making waves. And there are reasons why I review Steel Wheel Knives. I reviewed, reviewed a lot of them. I really like what they have to offer for the price point and the materials they give us for that price point. So with that, let's go ahead and hit the actual blades themselves. As I said, D2, you can get them with oxide, kind of really cool coating there. That's what the full size has or a satin finish here on the smaller one and there are different color combinations and attributes out there now the smaller version is going to be three and a quarter inches overall length and an actual cutting edge of like 2.8 uh with that choil and we'll talk about all that with ergonomics here in a little bit and then the full size is from handle scale to tip going to be 3.75 with an actual cutting edge of like 3.3 uh they both have high saber grinds Steel Wheel has been really doing that a lot lately, and I really like the performance level that the high saber grind gives you. Really like that a lot. Really cool, uh, just swedge that we have here at the top. Really like that blade shape. This has kind of been rounded off, but there is a sharp portion right there on both of these knives that will throw sparks. Um, they're not like razor sharp, so it throws decent sparks, but even with this coating, I was able to do that with the large one. And you could absolutely get a fire going or something like that. So because of the choils that these have, I think these would be a good crossover knife. If you're wanting an everyday carry knife that you could also take into the backcountry, hiking and camping and doing that stuff and kind of use as a backup to your fixed blade, I think these knives could do that, particularly the full size model just with the handle and the options and then the 90 degree spine as well now the d2 steel has been rock weld 58 to 60 i've never had any issues with d2 from steel will i think they do a good job with their heat treats and everything that i've ever experienced now i did and just to kind of show you as a reference i'll run in some footage right here with the testing that you're about to see and that i've been probably running in at this point i never just i never know when i'm actually filming these guys when i roll in the b-roll but uh, I went through the cardboard, hit the ground a couple times, and I put a little tiny roll on the full size. And so I decided to just use my pocket work sharp uh, field sharpener or their pocket sharpener. Literally like 15 passes on the diamond stone, some ceramic uh, touch up, and it was back to brand new. Razor sharp, took out the little roll, no issues. So D2 from Steel Wheel is easy to work with, but will hold a better edge than your HCRs and even your OS 8 that you're going to get from a lot of other companies that will be charging you similar prices that we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Now, um, the last point here that I will hit with the specs uh, is that on the smaller one, you're looking at 0.11 on the thickness there back near the stock and then a little bit thicker on the full size at 0 0.13 right there both great thicknesses with the grind angles and blade shapes and everything that they've decided to go with and it's a great blade shape it's got it's got everything you would need for any type of really daily use edc food prep cordage 
you know, carving if you need to do some of that, some basic stuff. I mean, it's not like a bushcraft folder or anything, but you could easily, you know, make some feather sticks if you needed to, make a quick notch if you needed to, something like that. Um, and then uh, have the control to, you know, go through lots of cardboard and cordy, all the different stuff that you're seeing here, guys. It's a great performer in that regard. And again, you're going to have better edge retention than a lot of other more budget friendly steels that are out there. But I mean, some companies, I mean, it's ridiculous that I'll see some companies that need to step their game up. They're putting, they're still doing 8CR or OS 8, but they want similar prices. It's kind of silly to me. But anyway, so really cool. It just kind of depends on your blade shape, or sorry, on your blade length that you prefer. Uh, the smaller one or the larger one, both are going to perform really well in their size ranges. All right, so I'll hit pocket clip with you real fast. These are totally ambidextrous knives with the finger flipper that we'll look at in just a moment and righties or lefties. So completely ambidextrous. That's always a great thing. I love to see that. I think that's a big win for Steel Will that they've always done that as well, offering that um, ambidextrous capability. Now, what's really cool is that the black and green one does come with a black uh, oxide matching pocket clip. That's really good. I hope they start doing that with a lot more of their knives. Now, this is the exact same pocket clip you'll find on the cut jack. It's the same one you're going to find on the Intrigue. It's the same one you're going to find, I believe, on the Modus as well. So, I mean, it makes sense. It's simple for them. It's like you kind of know it. It's a, a medium ride. It's not super deep, but it's not super high either. I think it's a good blending, you know, again, of kind of being a jack of all trades uh, design that they can slap on a lot of different knives. I would like to start to see some just differences in their pocket clips. They have done that with a few of, of their other knives. Um, this one, I think because you could use it in the outdoors or even as a possible like self-defense tool if you needed to, I think that's a good blend that you can still pinch it and pull it off. Um, deep ride loop overs are also nice. You know, it'd be nice to have that option as well in some designs, particularly that are more EDC focused down the line. But it's very simple for them and it gets the job done. Okay, so we'll look at the deployment, lockup, all that. The centering is perfect on both of these. I've had some time to really play with them a lot. Uh, I basically um, did more EDC time because I just didn't have a lot of new folders in the rotation at the moment. So these actually got more pocket time than uh, some of my other ones did, do uh, before I get the testing done. So, I mean, these have been deployed a couple hundred times each without any floating left or right. You can see there, just really nice centering. Now, something that I noticed, I don't see it on the little guy. The, the, the recess in on that tip is fine. There's nothing there. Um, I worked on it and to try and get it to come out, and I couldn't. But the, the larger one does seem to be kind of close, the tip right there. Now, I mean, I'm rubbing my finger in there. I'm trying to do everything I can with like the meat of my finger to try and get it. It can't catch, but it's close. So that's just more, almost more of just a data point. One, just to look for that in knives, because some knives are too close and you can nick it and flip it open. I can't do that, but you can see just how much, just a little pull, and you can see that's coming out right there, versus I have to work a little bit harder. I have to go further travel before it starts to do that on the smaller version. So it's not an issue for me at all, but it is something just to kind of be aware of and just enough, but it's like a micron. Um, to, to catch that, you know, to, that, to try and pull it out. So, um, but uh, other than that, guys, good centering, good detent as well on both of these guys for the lockups. They always do a good job with their detents. Bronze bushings, so nothing, you know, crazy out of the world, out of this world, but very tough, durable, you know, something that you know and can rely on. And I am using a Phoenix PD35 camo, urban camo today for our flashlight. You can see those bronze bushings in there. That'll be on both of those guys. Nice, good flipper right there. Easy to purchase for both of them as well. And boom, don't even need to flick my wrist and both of these guys will easily fly open. So that's really nice to see. Uh, there, There's not a stop bar on the back, say, and Steel Wheel does this with all of their knives, say like on this rat, just to show you there, there's a huge stop bar right there. So when the blade opens, it hits that stop bar. What they do is a travel bar inside. There's like a little track in here that has a little bar that stops in the liners. So um, it's fine. It's not quite as strong as something like this. So it would be nice to maybe see that in the future. I mean, it makes it look really clean and elegant in there. But stop bars, like these guys both have, right here are just thicker and stronger so that uh you know super hard bearing down on will be a little bit uh these are by no means weak knives it's just a data point for you but that's what keeps it from stopping then we got nice liner locks in there good centering on both a little bit thicker than the cut jack from what i can tell it looks to be just like a hair thicker which is nice i love it this is perfect for a liner lock no issues whatsoever and can easily be you know collapsed 
There you go. No problem there. So we will do a brief timeout here just to hit price point with you before we get to the handles and do some more competitive option discussion. Um, that the, these guys will go, the smaller one will go for um, $60, $59.99, and uh, the full-size one here will go for about $63. So G10, they are made in China, um, but that's pretty competitive to what else is out there right now. The D2, all the fit and finish is absolutely good there at that, about that $60 price point. Now, we'll have links in the description below, as we always do, over to Amazon, Blade HQ. We really appreciate when you guys purchase through there. And thank you guys for purchasing through those links. It always helps us out. Don't forget about Knockaround, Backcountry, Mystery Ranch, I mean, all that stuff. When you guys use any of those hyperlinks for any purchases, it helps me continue to make the content, guys. You fuel the channel, and I just really appreciate it. So thank you so much. If these knives are connecting with you or some of our other options, uh, thank you for using those links that we offer to you below. All right, so now on to the handles here. So again, color combinations. We got that army green with a G10 back uh, spacer matching that G10 uh, material. Then we have G10 here, but we have a red aluminum handle scale on this model. So there are different options there. That's a really cool, I really like it a lot. Pops really nicely, really digging that a lot. Now, one thing I did want to touch on, I actually saw a couple of reviews that said one or two knives, they were like banging into the back spacers. Mine have not done that at all. They, have, The fit and finish and quality has been what I've always seen from Steelwell, which is really good. So. Um, I didn't have any issues with that. Uh, I did see one or two people that had posted reviews that they were having banging issues, and maybe that was like the first out of the factory. These have been out for a little while now, and mine don't have any issue. With that, just want to give you a data point on it. Now, uh, as I said, G10, we got really good screws. They've been really nice, recessed in. They did a really good job with that. Good pivot screw there. Really well done, so you can absolutely take these knives apart if you want to. Really cool in that regard. So the the large, actually, let's do let's do weight here. So the small is going to be three point two ounces with those steel liners that they have in both of these knives. So good strength there, and the full size is going to be four point six, so four point five. So really nice in that regard. No no issues for for their size ranges. They're actually on the lighter end than what you can some, sometimes find. So it's nice that this full size one too, particularly at three point seven five, is under five ounces. A lot of knives in this regard with steel irons would be five ounces or more. So that's a, a nice aspect to have. So on the little guy here, when I measure near the pivot, we're looking at about zero point four eight on the handle thickness, and then we go to the full size guy. We're looking at about five. Yeah, 0.5. So good thickness there. Just give you some perspective on the cut jack. That's going to be 0.44. And the Intrigue will be 0.49. So similar uh, to that. But the these seem to be just a, the, the lanterns just seem to be a little fuller than the cut jack and mini cut jack. It's probably because there's such large flat portions here on these knives. And then it transitions abruptly. So it's kind of... Um, flat in the transition. These are more contoured, so there's a, a shorter flat point before it contours in. So it just feels a little bit more ergonomic in my mind than, say, Modus's or Cut Jacks. And, and then obviously the G G10 feels nice. And I wear large size gloves, as you guys know. I get full real estate on this smaller version. Doesn't feel like it's you know too small in my hand. And then that finger choil is just big enough that I can catch it in there get a really good feel for it, control if I want to do finer cuts. I have very minor jimping right up there. That works great, really locking me into place. So I really like that a lot, that red spacer again back there, popping and giving just a little bit of jimping, no hot spots on the little guy, and the full size is no different. That G10 spacer back there. And then when I flip that guy open, you can see they're nice and beefy, nice and full in the hand, plenty of real estate and that really good full-size choil. So the choil is bigger on the full-size, obviously. So if you, if you like choils or you feel like you're going to be using that a lot, the, lar the larger one does have a deeper, bigger choil and feels a little bit more organic. The mini one still is fully functional. It's not like a half choil like on the Civivi. That's one of my complaints with the Civivi. It's too small, in my opinion. This one's a little bit larger, uh, and so I appreciate that. And it's, it's similar. The full-size is similar to the Cut Jack. Uh, the cut jack, though, is even a little bit smaller, I think, than on the full-size lanterns. So uh, really good G10 handle ergonomics. Feels really good in the hand. Good weights, liner, you know, steel liners, all that jazz. So we'll transition now just for competitive options. Again, the steel wheel cut jack coming in at a cheaper price point. You know, this guy's going to be about $40, again, to be competitive in between these guys. 
uh, 60 to 63, $64. So, you know, you're paying about $20 more and really what you're paying for is just a different blade shape, G10 handle scales, and then kind of some different spacers. But the handle ergonomics to me, I mean, obviously blade shape, some people really like that kind of wide, kind of bluntish uh, shape of the cut jack. Some of you will way connect more with the laner uh, and the more, a little bit more spear point piercing in that regard. It does have, again, that 90 degree spine. The cut jack will not, the modus will not. Um, and then they got the, their polymer glass reinforced nylon handle scales. So um, these would be even slimmer and lighter with the cut jack and modus uh, series, um, but they won't feel quite as comfortable in the hand. Uh, and and they, you do know that you're paying, you're, you have a budget. I mean, they're still great knives, but you know that the cut jack and modus are kind of budget, whereas the lanterns have like another level with those backspacer kind of colors and then the G10. It just has another layer of, you know, quality that you can just kind of feel uh, with the knife if you ever held, you know, two different knives, one polymer. Great options. Uh, it just really is more than anything. Do you like G10 or glass reinforced nylon? Do you want a little bit lighter cut jack? Uh, and a little bit cheaper. If you want G10, pay a little bit more in different blade shape and different sh size ranges than the Cut Jack or Modus, then obviously the Lanner. Just to throw in more for size than anything else, the Intrigue up here, right around the $40 price point again for this model. Very similar, no finger choil though on that guy. And this guy is definitely more of like an elegant EDC, way more precise tip. Really great knife, but I would say this is purely an, an EDC knife. Whereas the cut jack in the lanner series or the mo even the modus, you could take and kind of use them more general purpose tools. I, I really would only use this, you know, for more around the office. Um, you could possibly put it into a self-defense role if you wanted to because of the piercing tip. But uh, just kind of give you guys some perspective there. Then to look at some other stuff that's not steel wheel. Again, we do have that Chinese made Civivi. The difference would be that those are on ball bearing bushings, which is a smoother deployment, but is not as durable as bronze. Bronze is very reliable. The ball bearing will be faster and a little smoother, but you can get gunk in there and just not quite as nice. Uh, and this guy will be about $50 if I remember correctly. And that has 9CR18 MOV, a more rust resistant steel. I would, st if you had asked me between the two, I would prefer D2. I'm just more familiar with it and I like it a little bit more. The 9CR is still a good steel, S close in edge retention, but I, I've always had a hard time putting edges on 9CR18 MOV. I, I haven't had that issue with the D2. And then you got that loop over you know, ambidextrous. So that's kind of like a middle of the road, very similar, but that choil is so small that I don't, I don't run, I never use it. I, I, it's not fun to use that choil. These are good choils that you can actually use. So that's one option there. And then some of you guys were asking me actually about this uh, on Instagram and I appreciate it. Your guys' feedback. If you don't follow us on Instagram, you need to. We've got 20,000 followers now. Um, we either have or soon doing a giveaway and it's just cool to see you get to get a lot of behind the scenes stuff and connect with me in a different way over there on Instagram, which is really cool. So um, the Raven uh, Bird, Raven 2, the BD1 Steel, good steel. The D2 will hold a longer edge. Um, the, the Choil is like the best Choil I'm gonna show you today because of just how they've designed it. Four-way directional pocket clip, G10 handles though, liner lock, but nylon bushings, then you put bronze on that. I don't know why they do that. About $45 to $50 for that guy. Again, so kind of between the cut jack and the lanterns there. That's just another option kind of in that same vein. Uh, and then finally, I'll run in just because. Got to do it. It's just a staple, man. The, the Ontario Rat Model 1 is just a staple. Man, when I started this channel seven years ago, it was like one of the first pocket knives I purchased. And that was when they did the OS 8. They had the old OS 8 version. You can still get those for about $25. It's a great blade for 25 bucks. This one is the D2 version made in Taiwan. Uh, bronze bushings as well. Liner lock, four-way directional pocket clip. Beefy, these are um, nylon scales, but kind of feel like G10. Heavier, this guy's going to weigh like, uh, you know, that, that's why I was saying it's nice that this is like four and a half because this is like 5.2 ounces. Full flat grind versus the Sabre. No choil, but a really big ricasso that you could kind of use as a choil. So a little bit more utilitarian. These look way more elegant. This guy's going to run, you know, like 45 to 50 bucks as well for that D2 steel on there. And that does have a 90 degree spine. So just kind of data points for you guys to decide, help you kind of know the, that these lanterns are kind of in, what I just showed you is kind of in that realm. And so you just can decide, are some of the blades that I showed you connecting with you more or the lanterns, you're getting great, overall performance, materials, options with these Laner series. And uh, that's a, just a really cool thing. Now, what's awesome is that we get to do a quick giveaway.
So when I had the urge to review this laner line, I reached out to Steel Will. I said, hey, would you send me one small, one large, and I'll give one of them away? And they were like, yep, sure. So uh, they sent those, these over to us and so that I could not only give you the full honest feedback, show you the things I like, some maybe drawbacks, give you all the data points, but also then be giving me the opportunity to give one of these away to you. So I'm gonna get the small one away along with a Gideon's Tactical Patch. Super cool right there. So you'll be getting the knife and the patch. Uh, I will ship it anywhere in the world. Please note that if you are in a country that does not accept the mailing of uh, knives, I will not ship it to you. So make sure that your country can take a knife. If it can't, please don't enter in to win this knife so we don't waste our time. So uh, I will annotate in. This will be a 24-hour giveaway. So as soon as this video goes live and then about 24 hours later, I will at random pick a, a, somebody from the comments below. Please one comment per person. And uh, my question that I'm going to ask you guys is, and this is what I want to hear in the comment below, is that if you were get, going to have an option to, you know, this is a cool red, but if what's like your favorite backspacer color? If you could with this knife have any color in the rainbow, which one would it, would you pick? You know, is it purple, is it blue, is it red, is it green, is it black on black, is it satin, brown, orange, aqua, teal, you know, whatever it would be, just tell me what you would pick, at, or it could be red, you know, the one that is here, that's fine. That just gets you entered in a win. So all you have to do is, boom, my favorite backspacer color would be, fill in the blank, and then boom, you're entering in the win. And then I will at random do a, ran a random uh, number generator, pick that comment, and then you will have 24 hours to respond to me. Uh, we'll email back and forth and I'll ship this baby out to you. If you do not respond to me within 24 hours, I will pick another person. So just be looking guys, be paying attention. Sometimes I've emailed some of you guys and you do not respond to me and I have to go pick somebody else and that sucks for you, not me. So um, yeah, be, be paying attention. 24 hours from now, uh, I hope it's just been fun and entertaining. Please subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Throwing up videos like this all the time. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Uh, any questions that you have. Uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook as well. We're growing there all the time. We just hit 20,000 uh, followers over on Instagram. Super cool. And uh, you can see behind the scenes stuff, pr projects that I'm currently working on that you'll see re reviews here on YouTube soon. Uh, different way to connect with me. You'll probably get a faster response through Instagram than you will uh, on YouTube because oftentimes I get inundated so much with the, the YouTube videos uh, or the YouTube comments that after a while it's hard for me to follow up uh, on them. So anyway, guys, make sure to hit those icons that have been popping up and stuff uh, for another video and the subscription. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, bam, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.